What's going on, Washington Football Nation? It's your boy, Rio Robinson, and I'm checking in on Monday, July 26th, as the Washington football team is looking to open training camp tomorrow, open to the public from Wednesday through Saturday in Richmond, Virginia, and I will be out there all week posting vlogs, catching up with the fans, and letting you guys know what these players look like at practice. I'm not sure if they're going to be in full equipment or not, but we're going to be out there giving you a post-practice pod and throwing some type of content out every day of training camp. And I'm so excited. I'm so ready to talk football. All these name-changing allegations and all that debates and stuff i'm ready to debate some actual football i'm ready to see what the quarterbacks look like what this wide receiver and linebacker battle looks like if landon collins will be ready in our safety situation but today we finally receive some type of update on the Deshaun Watson situation. And yes, it's a very polarizing situation. I understand that. And I do feel for all of the accusers in the situation because sexual misconduct is should not be tolerated. And it is not okay. But strictly football speaking, that's what we're going to get into today. And Tom Pelissero, Chris Mortensen, and Ian Rappaport confirmed this morning that the Houston Texans will finally be receiving, taking, and willing to sit at the table on a Deshaun Watson trade. And that trade is going to probably cost the team an arm, a leg, your firstborn, and the cure to COVID. But at the end of the day, You have to get as much compensation as possible because we've never seen a 25-year-old potentially elite quarterback who just came off leading the league in passing yards traded. We've never seen him moved before because franchise quarterbacks do not get moved. But this situation in Houston, it's not like anyone we've ever seen because not only did Deshaun Watson lead the league in passing yards. He leads the league in sexual misconduct allegations because he has about 22 from 22 separate massage therapists who've worked on him and done treatment on him. So the situation is very complicated. But from a football playing aspect, someone will certainly give them the compensation that they seek. And my question to you, Washington Football Nation, How would you guys feel if we were a part of the Deshaun Watson sweepstakes? Like I said, I know it's a touchy subject, a very touchy and sensitive subject, especially coming off the Beth Wilkinson report or lack of report that went out with all the sexual misconduct going on in Ashburn over the last 20 years. My personal opinion Unless Deshaun Watson was just unequivocally innocent and it came out to be that these were all made up, I don't see how Washington could touch Deshaun Watson because we are the one franchise right now who I feel like cannot touch Deshaun Watson. And Ron Rivera, it just doesn't fit the trend of what we're doing here. From a football playing aspect, man, we would have our goddamn franchise quarterback for the next decade plus. But the optics of it don't look good because we still don't know if he's going to be on the commissioner's exempt list, suspended, or how these allegations are going to play out in court. They are they are civil suits, not criminal suits, but these are still very, very, very serious allegations. And I don't think anybody should just sweep these allegations to the side and say, oh, it's a smear campaign. Look, I get both sides of the argument because the timing of it is very suspect, very sketchy as it came out upon his request, his trade request and his dismayal of what. Houston did in the hiring process of the coach with J.J. Watt and a whole sort of things going on down there in Houston. That Easterby guy, he's running amok with that franchise right now. But what I'm chill, what I'm still trying to get after is 
Who's going to trade for Deshaun Watson and what's it going to cost? They believe that the Houston Texans are going to be asking for, at minimum, three first-round picks or at least five high total picks and two starting caliber players in the process. For those of you who say, oh, my God, that's absolutely ridiculous. This guy, no. That is a 25-year-old elite quarterback, whether you like it, don't like it, whether the allegations are false, uh, they come out to be true or anything. What you cannot take away is the fact that Deshaun Watson is a great quarterback already, and he's only 25 years old. But (sighs) what makes the situation complicated is that you don't know if you're going to get him on the field for you this year. You have no idea, but I think most of the league would take that chance because that kind of talent, you don't find it overnight, and the draft is a crapshoot. So I can see a team like Philadelphia. I'm going to knock on wood because I hope to God Deshaun Watson does not end up in the NFC East seeing him twice a year, even though I believe our defense is equipped to handle it. But Deshaun Watson would walk in day one and be the best player in the NFC East, and it wouldn't even be a close call. The Eagles have the ammo with all the high picks that they have coming up. They could throw in a teaser of Zach Ertz, Fletcher Cox. There's a bunch of things that they could do to make sure they get Deshaun Watson. I think Philly, Miami, but I think Miami's going to rock with Tua. So I think it's going to be Philly or Denver ultimately who pulled the trigger on him. But I want to hear from you, Washington Football Nation. We monitored the Deshaun Watson situation before these allegations and and Tony Busby and all this went crazy. We were monitoring the Watson situation. How would you feel if the Washington football team made the call to Houston? And put an offer on the table. And how much would you trade for Deshaun Watson? Especially given the uncertainty of his situation. And how would you feel about Ron Rivera? Would you think less of him? Would you think it contradicts the culture that he's instilling here? We don't know these athletes personally at all. We don't know what's going on. We don't know what skeletons are in their closet. But from everything we had seen up to all these allegations coming out and accusations, Deshaun Watson was a model citizen, a humble guy, and a a key figure in the community in Houston. But those things, like, we are all human at the end of the day, and he could also be compensating for being a predator. I'm not on either side of this thing. I'd like to see this situation fully fleshed out and have all the details. I don't want to pick a side in the situation, but if I'm going to, I'm going to lean towards the women in the situation if I, w- if I had to make a choice. But I don't feel like it's a realistic thing for Washington to pursue Deshaun Watson. I feel like we've already made a commitment in 2021 to Ryan Fitzpatrick, and he may be the quarterback next year too, and we're going to be trading up in the draft for our young guy next year. And I think we're staying out of the circus atmosphere, big storyline distraction business for the time being. But I would not be upset if we at least made the call because that would show me that Ron and company did their due diligence and their homework. We just cannot have another Darius Geist situation here. We cannot have a non-vetted predator walking around in Ashburn because that's embarrassing. And I just think we're going to steer clear from that situation. But I definitely want to hear from the fan base. Should y'all should we make an attempt to go get Deshaun Watson? If you had to trade three first round picks, Landon Collins, Deron Payne, or Allen, one of the two, take your pick. A second and a third. Would you do it? By the way, that was thrown out by Matt Valdivinos, our guy on Washington football Twitter. So I want to give credit to him. If there was no legal ramifications involved, I would do that shit in a goddamn heartbeat. 
by picks, by select defensive linemen. But it's more complicated than that. But we're going to end up seeing Ryan Fitzpatrick this year. Whether you like it or not, that's our quarterback. And if he doesn't pan out, we're going to be seeing more of the beer man, Mr. Taylor Heineke. More to come on the Deshaun Watson situation. And more to come from Richmond this week as I'll be down there with my guy Pascal Todd, my guy Deontay Hallam, Alex Lucas, Jalen Morgan, Parker Hamlet, Josh Taylor, KG Skins 26, everybody, Washington football team community. I hope to see y'all out at Richmond this week. Let's turn up. Let's be safe down there and keep practicing all COVID protocols. And let's enjoy some football, goddammit. Until next time, hail to the nameless football team. Deuces.